Good evening, everyone. This evening we celebrate the most holy body and blood of Christ. I invite you all to please stand and join in our opening hymn, Gather the People. It's number 302. Salem brought out bread 
and wine, and being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God most high, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd, so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions. For we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men were numbered about five thousand. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about fifty. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set out before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. Now when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled twelve wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Before I begin, I'd like to make mention of what a special weekend it is with Father's Day. The, it's a wonderful thing and service that this parish provides by recording this 5 o'clock Mass and then posting it on the parish website for those who cannot attend Mass. There is a man who, would, who often has visited this parish when he would come out to the East Coast to visit his children. Now, because of age and poor health, he is confined to his home in Southern California. But he watches Mass here faithfully every week. He's your biggest and farthest away fan. And so I want to say Happy Father's Day to all of you who are celebrating Father's Day. And my friend Don out in California, included. And all those who watch this Mass are virtually because they cannot be here. To all the great, great dads and granddads of this parish, and there are many, believe me, uh, you deserve some credit. And the world makes little notice of you the rest of the year. Enjoy your day tomorrow, and many blessings upon you. Historians tell us that there has been more change in society and the way we live our lives in the past 100 years than in the previous 500 years all combined. Science and technology has brought new ways to do things, and we all, have, many of those things were things we used to have to do by ourselves, but now are done by technology or machines. Social change has also been incredible to witness. The map of the world has changed because of the many wars and conflicts in the world. Social norms and behavior continue to evolve and to change, not always for the better, unfortunately. But of the great social traditions that have been lost in these past hundred years is the family meal. Those of us who remember going to grandma's for dinner on Sunday afternoon remember a time when we did much, much more than simply eat grandma's food. We were encouraged to share our lives with those we loved. During our conversations at the dinner table, problems were solved, advice was given, bad behavior was corrected, especially in my case. And, though, and, and through all the food and laughter, love was shared. The Italians have a wonderful word for breaking bread. The word is compagnis. And the word companies is where we get our word companion and companionship. In the breaking of bread together, we are friends, we are one, we are together. What better companion then can we have for support and guidance in our lives than the Eucharistic presence of Jesus? Today, all over the world, 
The church celebrates Corpus Christi Sunday, as it was once called, the feast of the body and blood of Christ. It is a celebration of our faith in the saving gift of Jesus, who left us this memorial of his suffering and death. We remember with gratitude the promise Jesus made to be with us as our food and nourishment on our pilgrimage through life. All of us are a people on a journey, facing trials and sufferings of every kind. Although we have not yet reached our final destination, traveling in his company is a powerful assurance that we are on the right road. The Eucharist, often called food for the soul, is also called food for the journey, and it is a remedy for many of our faults and failures. It's the food that causes us to want to change our lives, to become more like the one we eat. If the old saying is true, we become what we eat, then what could be better and more beneficial food for us? We all know that what we eat it affects our health. My doctor's always reminding me that I should avoid greasy, fatty foods with high cholesterol and that I should eat more fruits and vegetables. Sadly, I'm not a big fan of fruits and vegetables, so I'm always, I always have a problem. We know that the food we eat affects us in every way, for good or for bad. The same is true for the Eucharist. The food we eat at this meal, the greatest effect this food has on our lives is unity. Unity of mind, unity of faith, unity of love and respect for one another. Jesus reminded his disciples over and over again that they were to be one in mind and heart. They were bound together in their faith and the Eucharist makes that bond stronger. And so the greatest effect this holy food has on us is that it unites us. We receive Holy Communion because we are in communion with one another. My father had a cousin whose name was Tim Unsworth. He was a syndicated columnist for a Chicago newspaper. He often wrote about the Catholic Church because he was deeply interested in the work of the Church. He once wrote that the unit about the unity of Christians and he noted that those who chose to belong to other Christian denominations are drawn together by what they share in common with one another. They often are usually of the same race, the same ethnic background, speak the same language, have the same political party affiliations, and they're drawn to that church because they seem to agree with what the preacher is preaching. Not so with Catholics. He said the Catholics can be best described as here comes everybody, meaning that we are all of very different backgrounds, politically, economically, socially, racially, and yet here we are, as different as we are, sharing the same faith, the same hope, the same Eucharist, sitting at the same table, united in the body and blood of Jesus. We are truly in communion with Christ and his church. Mass this weekend is celebrated in some way in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, in Mexico City, in Buenos Aires, in South Africa, and here in North Kingstown. And it's all the same Eucharist. Today, more than ever, that unity is threatened by the disunity and chaos we find in our culture, where political opponents treat, treat each other with disrespect, and where the so-called cancel culture dismisses those opinions we do not agree with, rendering their point of view worthless in the eyes of those who disagree. Sadly, we even find it in the church. I recently attended a large gathering of priests, which doesn't happen too often these days with a small and growing number of the fewer number of priests we have. But the first thing I noticed that the priests began immediately to break up into different groups. There was a group over here that doesn't like the Pope, a group over here that thinks the Pope isn't liberal enough, 
group over here that disagrees with the bishop and a group back here that we notice like the way the church is doing something there. And I like to walk around and kind of interfere, be rude, you know, walk in on these groups. Hi, how are you? <laughs> but very few of them would ever leave their group to go join another. It's so sad. We have so much to share, and yet we are so divided. The Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ is a reminder to all of us that we who approach this table to receive this sacred meal must be open to the effects it has on us. We have to begin to open our minds and our hearts and to help us find ways to draw each other together in our faith and not push each other away because we might not disagree. Or we might not agree. When we gather as a family of faith here around this parish Eucharistic table, we need to renew our belief that we are all of infinite value in God's eyes, and that the dignity we have as His children must never be must never be compromised, but always recognized in one another. And so may the body and blood of Christ, whom we receive today, be our guide, our strength, our unity, and our peace. Together let us profess the faith we share. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things made. For us and for our salvation, he came down to heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was in the of the church of Mary, and he came. For our sake, he was crucified in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living of the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I have confessed the baptism and the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection. Filled with a deep sense of gratitude and joy at the great gift given to us in the Eucharist, we approach our Heavenly Father with our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the leaders in the Church, keep them true to their calling, open to God's will, and eager to serve Jesus Christ, the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from hunger or malnutrition, that their need for nourishment may be satisfied by those who have the power to provide them substance and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those working to bring about peace in Ukraine, that they may be successful in their efforts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, may, their, may they experience Christ's peace and healing power in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For all the intentions of our parish circle of prayer and for those impacted by the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all those who have died, especially Lorraine Frechette, for whom we offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant that the unity we share with you in the Eucharist may transform our lives so that we may become what we receive. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink by me. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer to one another a sign.
let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. There are a couple of announcements. You might as well sit down. <laughs> your parish bulletins, you know, they're printed out of state and they're shipped to, to you. And somebody at the place where they're printed put the wrong code in for St. Bernard. And your parish bulletins are being handed out this weekend in a St. Bernard's parish somewhere out in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christine Pichette, who's so wonderful, spent the afternoon printing bulletins. So we have bulletins to hand out for you today. But if you want to see the actual bulletin, the way it was supposed to look, you can uh, go online and, and get it there. Uh, but, but whatever you do, take one home. Uh, it's also now the time to register the, for the face formation program for your children and grandchildren for the fall. So please look for the information in the bulletin concerning that or go online for that. And if you've not yet made your pledge to the Catholic Charity Fund Appeal, the parish hopes to wrap it up before the end of the month when this parish always makes its goal. I was always so proud of that, that we just always did that. And so I, I know that you want to help the parish do it this year. So we thank you for your generosity and remind you that if you haven't made your donation or pledge, you could do so this week or next. And now at this time, I would also I'd like to ask all the fathers, grandfathers, godfathers, stepfathers, adoptive fathers, foster fathers, or anyone who serves the role of father in someone's life, to please stand now for a blessing. O Lord of life, we are grateful for the gift of our fathers and grandfathers. They are the ones who chose, you chose for us, and they have shared with us your gifts of life and love. As they guided our early steps and showed us the wonders of life, we saw in them your holy face. In the long tradition of holy fathers with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, we ask you now to bless these fathers. Show us, O Lord, how we can express our gratitude by living lives of light and life, and grant to them your divine compassion and love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Now the Catholic gym class, we can all stand again. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended, we go in peace. Amen. And as we go forth, I invite you all to join with me in singing Canticle of the Sun, number 400.